Number 34, pure ozone decomposes slowly to oxygen, which is 2O3 gas yields 3O2 gas. Use the data provided in a graphical method and determine the order and the rate constant of the reaction. Okay, and then they give us this lovely data table. Now I notice that we have a unit of time and a concentration of the starting material. The starting material or the reactant is O3. And we have to basically use this data to determine the order and the rate constant for this specific reaction. Now, in general, the generalized rate law for any reaction is always rate equals K, which is the rate constant, times by the concentration of the reactants. Now, in this case, we only have one reactant, which is O3. So I'm just going to put that in there. So this would be specifically O3. Maybe I'll close that bracket up. And then it's raised to its order, the exponent on the top. But now the exponent on the top does not necessarily mean that it's going to be the coefficient. You can only take the coefficients and use those as your orders if you know that this is an elementary step. It has to say somewhere in there that this is an elementary step. However, in our case, they didn't say that, so I can't necessarily state that this would be right off to the second order. Could be, but we'll see. We will see by using the data that's provided. Now, in this case, it seems like we have two variables, right? We have time and the concentration of O3, right? Time and the concentration of O3. Technically, we have seven experiments or seven uh, different time intervals with their corresponding concentration of O3. And if we pay attention to what's happening, as time is increasing, right, all these values, seems like time is increasing. If we look at the concentration, the concentration is going down. So as time increases, that concentration of O3 is dropping. And that's what should be happening, right? This is a reactant. And as time goes on, as more O3 gets converted into O2, you're not going to have as much O3 anymore. But now the thing is, how are we going to use this data to find out if we have a zero order reaction, right? If this exponent is zero, or if it's a one for first order reaction, or if it's a two for second order. Now, the only way that you could figure this out is by finding out which trend gives you the linear line. We're going to use these data points to find out, you know, which one of these gives us a linear line. Now notice how the X axis for all of these graphs is your time value. So for time, time is going to be the X axis. Always. The only difference between your zero order reactions and your first order and your second order is the Y axis. They all have something to do with the concentration. And in this case, it's the concentration of O3, but it's just different formats, which will lead to the straight line, the linear line. So what I like to do is I like to just start from, you know, zero and work my way up. I say, okay, let's see if using this data, will it give me a straight line downward? And just know that these, um, these, uh, we'll say linear lines are definite, meaning this type for a reactant is always going to go down. The reactant is never going to increase because we're, we're assuming that we're going from left to right. So for a zero order reaction, you should see a, a decrease in your line or a, you know, a negative slope. Same thing for this one. And this one is increasing because it's the inverse, but Let's learn how to plug in these values into our handy dandy calcy. So when you want to try to input values from a chart, have no fear. All we have to do is a couple of things. The first thing is we have to input these values. In order to do that, you press the stat button on your TI-84. So here's my stat button. I press stat. Then it says edit. So I just press enter. Now I have my lists. I have L1 and L2 right? The L stands for lists. So basically what you want to do is you want to list 
one uh, variable and then your other variable. So we'll put maybe, I don't know, L1 as my time. So in this case, my L1 would be time. And then my L2 would be my concentrations. So let's see, I'm just going to go down. And I'm just going to start here by saying, okay, the first point was a zero. Then the next time was 2.0 times 10 to the third. Okay. The next point was 7.6 times 10 to the third. Okay. 1.00 times 10 to the fourth. Um, 1.23 times 10 to the fourth. 1.43. And don't, don't be worried that, you know, it's changing out of scientific notation. It just does that. And then 1.70 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so all my time values are in. And now I just have to plug in the appropriate uh, concentrations. So I, I go with the same idea. So 1.00 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. 4.98 times 10 to the negative sixth. Okay, and then don't worry that it, you know, changed the value. The number is still in here. It just has to round because there's just a tight, tight space up there. So 2.07 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then we got 1.66 times 10 to the negative sixth. Beautiful. Uh, 1.39 times 10 to the negative sixth. 1.22 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then 1.05 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. So we're going to see if this runs in uh, with a zero order reaction. And notice that I didn't have to do anything with these values because the y axis is just that concentration. So now what I'm going to do is we just have to plot this. So what you're going to do now is you're going to press second y equals. We only use the y equals button if you actually have the formula which we don't obviously here. But uh, when you have the, the data, you press the second Y. And now uh, you're gonna use those plots. Now mine is already turned on because I've been uh, inputting a lot of data. But if your says off here, all you're gonna do is press enter. And maybe it was like this, right? So all you just go do is go to on and just make sure that you have this graph uh, highlighted because you want to see the straight line and then make sure that your X is on L1 because that's what it what we said it was and then your Y was L2. You could change the different um, markers for your points and you could even change the color. Ooh, I'm feeling orange, right? That's definitely not a brown. Is this a brown? <laughs> that is not a brown to me. That's like a that's like a red. But anyway, um, yeah, you could choose any color that they have. A lot of grays. <laughs> um, I was feeling, ooh, that, that magenta. All right, we'll do orange. But now all we have to do is just find the graph. And what we do is we press zoom. And you want to go down to the zoom stat. Or you could just press 9. And there it is. So, did we get the straight line? Definitely not. Right? A straight line would be something like this. Thank you for autocorrect. It is definitely not a straight line. It tails off at the end. And, you know, we have something like this. It needs to be a complete straight line. So, unfortunately, we tried zero order, but eh, it's not the right one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this. And we move on to the next part. Would it be a first order reaction? So now we just have to redo the same thing, but we already have our L1 in there, right? The time value for all is going to be the same. So we already have our first list, the L1. All we have to do is just change L2. And now first order reaction says that if you want to get that linear line, the linear line will only show up if we take the LN, the natural log of your concentrations. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to stat. So we press the stat, we got to edit. And I'm not going to change any of my list ones 
right? Because that was the time values. They don't change. But we have to change all of these values to the natural log. So it just takes a little bit of time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to input these seven again, but I'm just going to press the LN button, which is the natural log. So for the first one, I'm going to say LN of the 1.00 times 10 to the negative fifth. Close the parentheses and press enter. It's a beautiful thing because it will do the math for you. Then we go on to the next one, LN of 4.98 times 10 to the negative sixth. Close that up, press enter. LN of 2.07 times 10 to the negative 6. Close that up. Beautiful. LN of uh, 1.66 times 10 to the negative 6. Close that up. LN of 1.39 times 10 to the negative 6. We're getting there. LN of 1.22 times 10 to the negative 6. Last one. I feel like I'm in like an 80s like, uh, like dance video. <laughs> Last one, come on. 1.05 times 10 to the negative six. Close those parentheses, let's go. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, cool. Now, let's just, you know, run through stat plot again. We already did everything for that, so technically you don't have to go run through stat plot again. All we have to do is just press the zoom stat. So number nine. Ooh. Okay. I mean, we're getting a little closer, but is this a linear line? It's got to be a linear line throughout. So if this is a linear line, yikes, right? It's got to be a whole linear line. And that doesn't look linear to me. So, I mean, by process of elimination, we know which rate this is. But, I mean, if you want to, we can just quickly do it. So we go back to stat. We go to edit. Keep the time as L1 because that doesn't change. But just now we just have to change all of our Y values as L2. The L2 now is going to be 1 over that concentration. So I'm just going to change all these. My concentrations are still the seven from the screen. So I'm just going to say, okay, for the first one, one divided by 1.00 times 10 to the negative fifth. Enter. One divided by 4.98 times 10. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> one. Okay, this one. One divided by. 4.98 times 10 to the negative 6, press enter. 1 divided by the third one, 2.07 times 10 to the negative 6. 1 divided by 1.66 times 10 to the negative 6. 3 more. 1 <laughs> divided by 1.39 times 10 to the negative 6. 1 divided by 1.22 times 10 to the negative 6, and 1 divided by 1.05 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, fingers crossed. If we don't get a uh, linear line, that technically means that maybe we inputted something incorrectly in the beginning, so then we would go back. But let's, let's see if we get the linear line here. Stat plot's already set up, so we just go to zoom and 9. Wow. There it is. How beautiful. There's our line. It looks just like, um, you know, the line that we're supposed to get. So now we know that it's definitely a second order reaction, which means that it did follow the, uh, the coefficient. So it would be a two. Okay. So we determine the order, it's a second order, and now we just have to find the rate constant. Now just know that the rate constant for this comes from the slope. And the slope that we find out is the rate constant, which is the k value. Since it's a linear line, we do the linear line slope formula, right? Whenever you want to find a slope, it's just equal to um, y2 
minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So, since it's all linear and all the points are on the graph, it does not matter which one you choose. So, for us, I don't know, maybe we'll pick the first and the last one, but you could pick maybe these two, you could pick this two, it doesn't matter. We'll get the same k value. Okay, so what I'm going to do is keep in mind that it's time versus 1 over the concentration of O3. Somebody must be outside. <laughs> um, so we can't take these values. We have to take the 1 over. So let's just go back into our stat just to find out what those numbers are. And we're going to just press edit. And here's all of our values. So let's see. For the first one... Uh, it's always, remember, x comma y, and we have, I'll just do this, and maybe I'll put this, I don't know, maybe we'll move this over here, and let's see, okay, so for the first one, our x value, which was the time, is 0, so this is 0, comma, our y value was, what was that, 100,000? And then let's do the same thing for the final one. So our x value now is 17,000. Boop, boop, boop. And then let's just pull this over. I think I need a little bit more room. And the y value is, I mean, yeah. For all of these, I mean, technically it's not the, the full answer. So maybe we'll just put, you know, 9,500 to... Four zero zero, if you want. I mean, you could go the full the full number, and now just plug it and solve. So slope equals. We'll do the x's first on the bottom. Um, we'll do seventeen hundred minus zero, and then on the the top, we'll do nine five. Oh, maybe that should be blue. Nine five two three eight one minus. Uh, 100,000. So let's just simplify this and then we just plug it in. Slope equals oop 17,000. Oh boy. What is going on there? 17,000 on the bottom and what do we got? 852381. Because you're just subtracting 100,000. And now, here we go. The slope for this one is the k value. So let's just quit this and do the math. 85232, what? 852381 divided by 17,000. Yay! Uh, three sig figs, I guess. So, 50. Point one, right? Yeah, we'll do that. And 50, we'll say 50.1. And now what are the units? The units of K always change depending on what overall reaction it is. In this case, it's second order. So if you have uh, a second order reaction, the units of K are going to be we could, we could basically say this as molarity minus 1, time minus 1. You just got to watch out for what the time was in. So in this case, we have the molarity. So this is molarity minus 1. And now the time that they told us was in hours. So I just say hours minus 1. And that is the final answer. Okay. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I, I hope it's, you know, this channel is helping you out. We got physics videos. We got math videos. More subjects coming your way. And I hope you're having a great day out there. All right. Um, keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye.